Okay, so I'm trying to not overdo these little video clips. I don't think I should do, I don't think I should. I don't want to overdo it. Um, but sometimes I have some thoughts on my mind and I feel like I want to say, I want to talk about them. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is... Even though in other video clips I've talked about being kind of crazy and um, uh, drinking, you know, being on meds, drinking, you know, stuff that's not considered to be... Um, acceptable or kosher by a lot of people, but I feel like I should say that I used to work in the mental health field. I used to work years ago in the addictions field. <laughs> I've worked with children. I've worked with adults. Um, you know, I used to be a social worker and I can see where a person might say, uh, you're not supposed to be a social worker if you're crazy too. Um, I totally get that. And I guess I just want to say that, I mean, I've been around a lot of other social workers, a lot of other mental health professionals, and what I can tell you is that most of them, if not all of them, but most of them go into that field because they're either trying to understand themselves or they're trying to understand their family. And it's almost like a double-edged sword. It's like someone who's grown up around mental health and substance abuse and trauma has like a built-in knowledge about those things. Um, but it's also good to have a solid understanding of what's normal, quote-unquote normal, and what we should all be striving for. You know, just because we grew up in a certain environment doesn't mean that we should try to recreate that environment. So, I just want to say that, yeah, I used to work in the social work field, mental health addictions, children, adults, and I just felt a real kinship with that because I grew up in a family where there was mental health, there was substance abuse, there were trauma survivors, um, and I'm, I guess that means that I'm comfortable around those people like I feel like I gravitate towards them I have an instinct to want to be around them or want to talk to them and for myself I think I had you know milder mental health issues when I was younger but then when I got older and more traumatic things happened I started to have more mental health s symptoms. Um, but, you know, my point is that, um, you know, a lot of people that work in mental health come from mental health or come from some kind of trauma or addictions background and they're trying to understand it and they're trying to in some way help um, 
help people that might be going through something they went through, might be trying to prevent something, and it doesn't mean that that person is perfect (laughs) or that person has all the answers or that person doesn't sometimes have their own mental health problems, um, you know, but it does mean that that person cares, cares very deeply. And, you know, for myself, I think I just always really wanted to hear people's stories. I'm very interested in stories that people have to tell me, whether it's adults, children. Um, I believe everyone has a story, even if they're super healthy or if they're not healthy. Everybody has a story, and I, I like to hear it. You know, I think stories have value. Narratives have value. Um, nobody's perfect. And I don't know. I just think there's value to that. Um, I think if I could do anything for a career, I would just interview people, like regular people, um, documentary style. I would just interview them, you know, about their current lives, their childhood, um, you know, what they feel drives them, what they feel holds them back. Um, I just get into that. I think people are fascinating. And I think everybody has something to teach. Um, And, you know, we can all just learn from each other. You know, sometimes people handle things well. Some people... Sometimes people handle things badly. Um, You know, I think of myself as someone who has sometimes handled things well and sometimes handled things badly. And I forgive myself for that because I feel like I always meant well. I always wanted to try to handle things well, but I wasn't always able to for different reasons. And, you know, I'm not a perfect person, but I don't try to be malicious. Um, so yeah, I mean, I look back on my career as a mental health professional, as a social worker, and I think, you know what, I do think that I helped some people. I don't think I helped everybody, but I do think I really did help some people, and those people live in my heart, and... Um, you know, I, you know, I think I was raised to be able to connect deeply with people and, you know, sometimes that's been a good thing and sometimes that's not been a good thing. Um... You know, I have memories of being little and saying to my mother, tell me a story about the olden days. Like, my mother would joke around and say, oh, in the olden days. And a lot of those stories were cool. They were funny, and some of them were very dark and very scary. But... um. You could say I grew up at my mother's knee. I grew up, you know, listening to her and having her tell me different stories about her life. And that's what I'm into. I'm into the stories. I'm into people's narrative. And even though I have felt a wide range of emotions towards my mother, 
Um, no one's made me laugh the way my mother has. No one has made me feel loved the way my mother has. No one has made me feel a fire to fight for injustice like my mother has. My mother went through some terrible, terrible shit in her childhood. And if you asked her about it, if the average person asked her about it, she would minimize it and she would say, oh, I forgive my parents. You know, it's easier to forgive them because they're dead now. You know, my mother would be nice about it. But my mother went through hell. And in spite of that, she became a teacher, a beloved teacher to many. And even though she's let me down in some ways as, you know, as a parent when I was a child, now as I'm, as I'm an adult, I do have a lot of admiration for my mother. My mother is very strong. My mother is the epitome of someone who was given lemons and made lemonade. And my mother's a bright light in this world. She was a bright light in my childhood. Um, and it's almost like it's hard for other people to measure up to the light that I saw in my mother when I was little. Um, you know, it's like... It's almost like a lot of people don't measure up in my eyes. And, you know, that's been a struggle for me in terms of, I think, forming an intimate relationship that's lasting. Um, but I do pay a lot of tribute to my mother. You know, there's been a lot of times in the last 10 years when I thought, oh my God, she's not good after all, she's a piece of shit, she betrayed me, she sold me out, blah, 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 but ultimately, I'm very attached to her, and, you know, she's been a driving force in my life, a driving force in becoming a social worker, a driving force in wanting to hear people's stories, a driving force in wanting to reinforce to people what is good and strong about them. You know, everybody has weaknesses and things they're not proud of, but I think everybody has things that they should feel really good about, and I like to try to point those things out to people when I can. And I don't know, I just, I don't regret my past career. I don't regret going into social work. I don't regret going into mental health and substance abuse, even though I've had some of those issues myself. Um, I do still think I did help some people, and that's enough for me. And... You know, I just think people know when you're trying to connect with them and you're trying to listen and you're trying to get it. And, you know, I'm sorry to anyone that I haven't helped, to anyone that I've misunderstood. Um, but... I guess I just feel like a lot of people don't even want to try. Like, they don't even want to try to understand different, kind of pro different kinds of problems that people have. They just don't even want to bother. They're just like, whatever. You know, you're weird. And get away from me. Like, they just don't even want to know. But I'm always willing to try to listen and try to understand and try to know and try to find the good that there is and point that out and reinforce it. 
And I just think people are stronger than they realize. You know, there's people that have been to hell and back, but they're just a lot stronger than they realize or anyone else realizes. And it's inspiring. I mean, that's the human spirit. Um, you know, I grew around some darkness, but I also grew around some light. My mother gave, gave a great light. My brother gave a great light. Um, they gave darkness too but they gave great light. And I think, you know, part of my problem with um, being attracted to quote-unquote healthy, normal people is that I'm drawn to the light. Like, even if there is dark, I'm drawn to the light. You know, it's harder for me to be drawn to someone who's just kind of in the middle, in between, um, you know, not that light, not that dark. You know, I think, I think what my family gave me was a tendency to be drawn to the extremes. Like, oh, it's really dark right now, but oh, it's so light. It's so light. <laughs> Tomorrow, it's going to be so light next week. Um, you know, being able to tolerate extremes of dark and light. Um, so, yeah, I'm not ashamed of having mental health issues, having some substance abuse tendencies, even though I work in those fields because... I'm not saying it makes me an expert, but I'm just saying I I know instinctively certain kinds of people and certain kinds of moods and circumstances and situations. And if I can help anybody, if I can help anybody by saying, hey, I get it, I get it. I know I'm not living it, I know I don't totally 100% understand it, but I get it on some level. If that helps people, then I've done enough. I've done enough. Because I want people to do that for me. Like me and my current struggles with mental health and substance abuse, I want somebody to say, I get it. I want them to recognize that I'm strong and that... A lot of people might not have made it this far and that, you know, I've survived and there's a lot of lightness in me, even though there's a lot of darkness in me. So, thank you for listening. That's all I'm going to say for now. I do not apologize for my past career. <laughs> I don't. I don't.